Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. We are broadcasting from the Hardy Realty Studios on Broad Street in downtown Rome, Georgia, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. I'm Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. I'm Carly Parker with the Rome Floyd Chamber. Today on our podcast, we have Elizabeth Huff and John Dantimo with a Night to Remember Foundation, Johnny Jonathan P. Peabody, Cusa Financial Planning, Catherine Lavorne with Living Proof Recovery. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are hey. we? Outstanding. Um, welcome to our Hardy Realty Studios on Broad Street. Thanks for being here. Um, so let's just kind of go around and uh, start our cocktail party without the cocktails. We, we were chatting beforehand about kind of an unusual group of different organizations and businesses, and we want you to share your stories and maybe create some connections in the room. And I know there were some already some questions going back and forth beforehand, and I was like, wait, save it for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, Elizabeth and John with A Night to Remember, tell us a little bit about your organization, please. Okay, so um, this will be our sixth uh, prom, and that is our major fundraiser. And we, in the past, have uh, donated to Alzheimer's Association 100%, but we are trying to take a three-pronged approach this year, and we want to start our own respite relief program to help families who um, are struggling finding some assistance uh, due to them being the primary caregiver. All right. What is what's the background of your organization? Kind of where did this where did this seed start? So back in I want to say 2015, um, Sharice Durham had a dream of starting a fundraiser prom to support the Alzheimer's Walk, and it became huge. Um, I mean, we were you know thirty forty thousand dollars that we were donating, and so. Um, you know, she recently has moved to Florida, and so she kind of um, handed us her baby, and we've all been involved in some way, and so uh, we have a good group of board members, and we're, uh, you know, the 2020 kind of knocked us out of the park there for a little while, but we are back, and I'm just super excited to be able to host another uh, fundraiser. Did you find that Adults were just craving a prom experience again. <laughs> Oddly enough, yes, <laughs> yes, it's, they they want to get dressed up, and we do a fun fancy, fun fancy. Uh, this year will be our fun. It's going to be heroes versus villains, and so some people dress up in full prom attire. Some people dress up to theme. Um, it is a, a fancy event. It's going to be at the wonderful Taylor Estates. We're so grateful for them um, on October 29th. We are going to start at eight o'clock, and uh, VIP and our um, our prom court will be able to get there at about seven. So we'll do a little bit of uh, to do for them first, and then general mission comes in. And we have a DJ. We're going to have a photo booth out of Atlanta that is just amazing. Uh, we're working on a few food trucks. Normally we do a little more fancier, but due to the theme, you know, so we thought that food trucks might. So yeah, no, we're super excited. It, it, it's slowly coming together. It, it's a lot of work, but you know, I'm I'm excited to see the end result for sure. I'm curious, and we'll circle back around to this. With it being an adult prom, do you need teachers or chaperones? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we definitely need chaperones, but we don't have any chaperones. Uh, okay, let's say hello to John, Jonathan Peabody with Cusa Financial Planning. How are you, Jonathan? I'm great. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, Cusa Financial Planning. Big picture, what do you guys do? Sounds like it's in the name. (laughs) Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're a financial planning firm. We're an independent firm. Uh, We operate under Dempsey Lord Smith, who's been in the community for a long time. Um, We primarily help clients uh, figure out where they are and where they want to be, and we we come up with a plan to get them there. Okay, so if I say I want to be rich, what's the plan? Well, (laughs) I, you know— uh, that's never a guarantee. The majority of this is uh, behavioral. So we, we will help you choose good investments that fit what you need, but uh, primarily we're going to uh, teach you what you need to do to be successful with, with your personal finances. Right. So there's no overnight fix. I can't just be rich. Uh, get, get rich quick hardly works. So. Uh, but uh, what are some common mistakes? Um, well, yeah, you know, some. it's funny. We were talking about um, just the education of uh uh, people and the mistakes that they may make early on in their lives. And one of the most common mistakes is overspending, not living on a budget. A second one is trying to invest too early. Um, if you, if you don't have a good foundation, you don't have a good, you know, we call it an emergency fund or a rainy day fund, you can't invest long-term. And then um, 
I, I tell all of my clients that money's like soap. The more you touch it, the less of it there is. So those are a couple of the most common mistakes. Uh-huh, that's clever. Okay, well, we'll, we'll come back around. Uh, hi, Catherine Lovern with Living Proof Recovery. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, I love saying we are hunky-dory, as we say down south. Um, so <laughs> so uh, um, they maybe say hunky-dory in other parts of the country, do they? I don't know. I, I claim it as a regional thing. Uh, tell us about Living Proof Recovery, please, ma'am. Absolutely. Living Proof Recovery is a recovery community organization. So what we get to do is our mission is to help support the long-term recovery needs of our community through advocacy, training, peer support, spiritual guidance, and housing. So that means that we get the opportunity to walk alongside people in our community and that need to be in recovery from substance misuse or um, it could be from a lot of times we get dual diagnosed, which is when you, are substance, you have a substance misuse disorder and you also live with a mental health challenge. Uh, so we get to help them find their pathway to recovery. So this is uh, alcohol, drugs, what have you? Mm-hmm. Okay. So t- tell us about the problem that exists out there. Um, it's, it's a bad problem, isn't it? It's really bad. It's everywhere. August is overdose awareness month. I don't know if you guys know that, but there have been a significant rise in overdoses since COVID happened. Um, for Floyd County, it has been devastating. It's been devastating. There's been so many more overdoses than there ever has been before. What's the correlation of COVID? Just people getting sad or depressed or isolated? Isolation is one of the biggest things. But also for people who live in recovery, lots of different things can be triggers for them. And isolation is the biggest thing because you would think that the opposite of addiction is sobriety. But it's not. The opposite of addiction is connection. Connection with like-minded people. And when you're shut down from COVID and you can't leave your house and you can't connect with your sponsor, you can't connect at your your recovery meetings, you can't come to your recovery community organization and get the healthy support that you need, then that immediately could send them into not only in that isolation, but that's when their guilt and their shame and their um, depression and all the things get worse than they were before. So the first thing they want to do is they're going to go use. Right. Okay. So uh, excuse my ignorance, but people who use you, are they considered patients? Are they, what, what do you, no, thank you for asking. That's actually a really good question Yeah, because a lot of um, people have actually asked that. To me, they're peers, and the reason why they are my peers is because I am a woman in long-term recovery, and what that looks like for me is that it has been six and a half years since I felt the need to use to feel something or feel nothing. Oh, that's an interesting phraseology. Uh, so, okay, tell, tell me how it works. Somebody... They, they they need your services, so they reach out, or do family members reach out? How does it work? Both. Um, a lot of people, we get referrals from either the hospital or we work really closely with our drug court treatment program, and a lot of their classes are done there. Our daily reporting center, we work closely with them too. They'll come in there. But a lot of people, it's by word of mouth. Organically grown is what we've been doing since 2016. So um, a lot of our peers will walk into our building and say, this is what's going on. I don't know what to do. I just know I don't want to feel this way anymore, and I don't want to be here. You know, help me. Help me help myself. And so did you get involved because of your own situation, or how did you? what is your background to get yeah. connected to the organization? Absolutely. Okay, so for me in 2016, I was going through yet again another treatment program, and they're all the same. And treatment works for some people, but the majority of people, they need something different. And for me, I went to a meeting that was at West Rome Baptist Church. They allowed, um, and their well, the well over there, we had a meeting. I went to this meeting early in recovery, and the founder, Claudia Hamilton, was there, and we had 15 people in this meeting. But what I found in that meeting was it was different than any other meeting I'd ever been to because I thought they were stupid, honestly. <laughs> um, well, how is that different than any other meeting? I, I, right. I, go, I, go, to, yes. I go to meetings where everybody's stupid, right? Right, <laughs> yes. right. So, but you guys are In fact, this you. is one right now on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but for this meeting, like, I felt like what my voice mattered. What I had sure. to say was important, and it was fully supported. Whether I wanted to talk about my faith or my hardship, or I wanted to say a very profane word because that's how I was feeling at the time, that my feelings were valid. They might have not been facts, and your feelings ever change and ever grow, but they were heard there. 
And so I started in conversation with the founder, and she became a major part of my recovery because I thought, I want what she has. I want the hope. I want the strength. I want the sobriety. I want the lifestyle. I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference. And so after that time, I just started going to meetings with her. I started having conversation and mentorship with her. And that led into me getting to become a part of her pouring her all and building this organization that now I get to lead. Right. So what's your title? I am the executive director of Living Proof Recovery. Wow. So you're proof positive. I am proof positive. <laughs> like, no kidding. We used to have these shirts that said 100% proof on the back, and it was not for alcohol. <laughs> Total opposite. <laughs> Total opposite, you know, because it's because I am 100% proof that I'm living proof. You know, I am living proof. Um, and people say you support what you help create, you know. And I got to help see that come to fruition. And I get to every day give those people hope because I'm telling you, I know what it feels like to be lost and broken and have nobody in your corner. Oh, sure. Um, well, one of the things I like to do, and I'm, I'm glad you touched on it there, was your background and how you got a, uh, connected to your organization. Uh, John and Elizabeth, how, what is your background? Do y'all have, y'all have day jobs or is this it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely have a day job. Uh, I'm... Uh, or do you- I work for myself uh, doing construction. I bartended downtown for a long time. That's how most people know me. And um, through that is how I met Sharice. Um, and so they were, Sharice was uh, putting on the prom. I love anybody that's ever seen me knows I love dressing up. I, um, anything that's involving, involving costumes, I'm all about it. So when they started doing the prom and, and she pandered. Is it was, the first one was an eighties. The first one I went to was an eighties prom and like, you know, my tail was wagging. I couldn't wait. Uh, <laughs> so, so, well, so what did you wear? Uh, I, I kept going around thrift stores until I found a, uh, linen suit. I found a silk you, you, shirt. You at Miami vice, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. I found for the, the people out there that may remember these, I found tree torn, shoes that were like popular they were super popular in the 80s and uh i found those online for like 12 bucks so i had those i had the the silk shirt the linen and i, I found one of those terrible you remember the terrible ties where it's like the squared off bottom but they're like a knit oh sure yeah, yes yeah, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. and and uh, the See, this fu- was this was the 80s carly <laughs> 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 Ronald Reagan was president and movies like Top Gun and Back um, to the Future came out. Oh, thank you. Are, wait, <laughs> the are first you talking time. about the Top Gun that just came out? <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going this year for Heroes, Heroes and Villains? You know, I, I, I wasn't sure exactly. Um, I kind of like the idea of doing the villain route, but I have to uh, consider our sponsorships and before I decide exactly which villain I want to be. So what kind of what kind of crowd do you get? What kind of participation? Uh, like how many people show up and how much money do you raise and things like that? So um, in the past, we have sold out every single one of our events. Um, and it started um, small. I, I wasn't involved on the first one, but I know it's a couple hundred. And um, I want to say the last one we reached 500 ticket sales. And so um, now not everyone showed up. But they still supported, and we are grateful. Um, it, the last one was at Taylor Estates, and it was uh, it, it was a pretty full room, but there was still plenty of elbow room to get out there and dance and, and do our thing. So um, we we've raised, you know, I know I have a big check that uh, that we gave to the Alzheimer's Association, and it was a little over forty thousand dollars. Wow. So, um, anywhere from thirty to forty, and it st- it started smaller. You know, it, you know, it started small, but it it is uh, it's grown and grown. And if we have to take a couple steps back and 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 have a smaller portion that w- that was raised, I'm willing to do that because this is our first go at it from from a lady who who started it. So this is really now our baby, and so I'm just super excited to be able to see. Um, uh, the people gather again and support a cause that is that is so so important. Um, okay, what is what is your background, John, at Cusa Financial Planning? Well, I've actually uh, kind of done a little bit of everything in my, in my history. I actually didn't grow up in Rome. I grew up in a little place called Varnell, Georgia. Um, 
I, I know none of you have heard of it. I, I have heard <laughs> no. of Varnell. Okay, well, uh, it, it was probably the USA Today article when they installed a red light. All the farmers, <laughs> all the farmers were upset. The government was telling them when to go and when to stop, and it was just a, a big thing. But, yeah, but um, I, I grew up there, and uh, uh, I came. I actually came to Rome originally in two thousand three to Shorter College. It was college, Shorter College at the time. Um, and I, and I had the pleasure of working at the Piggly Wiggly at the foot of the hill. So, um, yeah, so I, I fell in love with Rome. It's just an amazing place. And then I, I finished up at UGA, go dogs. And, uh, and then I, and then I bounced around, uh, I, I served in the military. I'm still serving the reserves. I'm at 17 years now. How good to go. Thank you for your service. Yes, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. it. But, um, I, you know, throughout everything that I was doing, I was, um, I, I, the common theme was I was always helping people. I was teaching I was passionate about certain things, whether it was, you know, what we were doing in the military or um, when I was in manufacturing, you know, helping improve the processes. And, and throughout it all, though, there was a common thread of personal finance, and it was based on a personal experience of me not doing well with personal finance. Mm-hmm. So you could all tell me your horror stories with personal finance, and I probably could share uh, share some stories with you as well. But uh, it, it the common theme was that, I you know, I wanted to help people that worked around me with taking care of their personal finances. And uh, that that became a reality a couple of years ago when I actually uh, joined, joined Dempsey Lord Smith. And and then I partnered up with my friend, Jeff Rickett. Uh, he's been in the business 27 years. He's the reason I'm in the industry, actually. And uh, here we are. Well, it's interesting. Uh, when we were chatting earlier, you mentioned, uh, like, it's possible. You, you often hear the biggest mistake is people don't start early enough. Mm-hmm. And, but you also cautioned against you know, you need a foundation first. You sometimes you can overinvest too early. You you said that a little bit earlier, right? So, what's what's that fine line? How do you navigate that? You just need to do Q and A with somebody and say, okay, what's your situation? Well, you know, every I keep saying personal finance because it is very personal. Everybody's situation is different, um, but there are some building blocks. There are some key things that you can learn that that make you successful in the long run. And and one of them is just understanding what investing actually is and what it's for. You know, this isn't a get rich quick scheme. This isn't, you know, uh, an overnight thing. It's, it's, it's work. You know, I don't like to use the word rich. I like to use the word uh, wealthy because wealthy actually requires the work. You can't go to the gym one day and then expect to have a six pack, uh, the next day I've been working on it for a while and I should probably go to the gym more than once a year, but, um, (laughs) you know, but the same thing happens with personal finance. If you're not intentional, if you don't, if you're not intentionally planning, which is in our name, right. And you're not, and you don't know where you want to go, you're not going to get there. And so, um, that, that's, that, that's kind of the cornerstone of what we do. We do, we buy and sell securities and, and we can, you know, do IRAs and brokerage accounts. We do all that. And that's, you know, that is how we get paid. But if you're not doing the other things, if you're not doing the work, uh, you're, you're not going to be there long term. Yeah. That reminds me of the old cliche. If you are failing to plan, you are planning to fail. Exactly. Which I heard more than one football coach tell us over the years. So, you know, the, the biggest mistake people, people make is, is not asking the questions they need to ask early enough. They think, oh, I, I don't need to talk to a professional yet because I'm young or, oh, you know, that's the last thing on my, on my calendar. I've got too much going on. And the, the truth of the matter is the earlier you speak to someone and at least get pointed in the right direction, the better off you'll be in the long run. Yeah. It's funny. I can remember my dad telling me in my teens or twenties. Yeah. You want your money to work for you long term, mm-hmm. but be careful because money can work against you. Credit card debt, for example, yes. um, you know, then, then that interest rate is working against you, especially mm-hmm. if you're not paying it off every month and you're right. just you're basically paying the interest so that type of stuff is cautionary tales exactly and unfortunately we live in an uh, I, I don't know what it is about our educational system but you know uh, personal finance is something that's not really um r- really ever talked about you know i remember uh my senior year i was a nerd and i got done with all of my required classes early and i took this life skills class and they taught me how to apply for a credit card have a decent credit score and balance a checkbook and so, um, and you know, they never really talked about if debt could work against you. They never talked about, um, you know, actually developing those, those skills to be successful in the long run. So, and yeah, change a tire. <laughs> that's, lo- a, that's a good one as well. <laughs> yeah, for there's, sure. There's lots of stuff you need to learn that, uh, <laughs> sometimes the real world just kind of, uh, hits you in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about the, your various organizations relationships with the chamber. Uh, how has that helped you connect and create 
relationships in our community. Uh, Catherine, we can start with you. Well, first of all, I want to thank the Chamber because yesterday was National Nonprofit Day and they sent me a very kind email like saying thank you for everything that you're doing. You know, that's huge for me. That that was huge that they took the time out to reach out to me as an organization and say, you're doing a great job. You know, that means they're thinking about that because I run a nonprofit and I didn't even know there was a National Nonprofit Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to educate myself on that some more but um it has been really really good for us to be a part of the chamber of commerce because it allows us to be able to come to all of these different events because i feel like what they do they're the hub to bring us all together which i love they bring all of us as business owners as organizations they bring us all together like we're gonna have this event we're gonna have this event we're gonna do before hours we're gonna do after hours do podcasts i know everything (laughs) they do everything you know but if i ever need anything i know that i can reach out and say hey you know what what do you think about this or who do you know would do this and it's it's a giant resource for us to be able to have And speaking of letting you know stuff, we are hiring. So it is on our Facebook page. We also posted it on the Chamber um, on RomeGeorgia.com. So if you guys know of anybody um, that is interested in working at Living Proof Recovery, if they are living in long-term recovery, um, please have them give us a call because... I can send them a job description. We're taking applications through the month of August, and we'll start hiring and doing interviews probably the first week of September. Oh, good for you. Um, Chamber connectivity? Oh, as far as us, um, I I have to agree with with you. Um, It is a a connection. So getting those emails and being able to see what's going on for the week. So outside of my, uh, our regular lives, because this is all volunteer work, uh, we don't, we don't get paid through, you know, a night to remember. We just love what we do. So, you know, I'm looking at what have I already got planned and what can I attend? And, you know, it's, it's just, it's a great resource. So being able to get our word out and let people know that this is what we're doing and this is how we're doing it. And, uh, we're doing it again, darn it, you know, cause people have, have kind of, well, what's going on with prom? And so a, a lot of word of mouth, but they also have a calendar. So if you have an event coming up and you're a, a chamber member, you can add your event to the calendar. So those that may be visiting or those that are chamber members can look up and see what's going on in Rome. Um, it happened with our, our 5k. We had a second annual and we had a family from Florida that was visiting their mom who was in the hospital and their 5Kers. And so they just Googled it and found it on the chamber that we were doing a, a 5K and showed up. And they every single one of them took a gold medal. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's all for, for us. It's just been a wonderful connection. Jonathan? Well, I actually started my... Uh, you know, um, relationship with the chamber when I was working for Dempsey Lord Smith, I, I kind of inadvertently became their, uh, you know, chamber link. And, uh, and I was, uh, lucky enough to attend leadership Rome in 2020, uh, with Pam, who's now the president of the chamber. So that helps out. Yeah, we, the best we, one ever. It was, it was, it was a crazy <laughs> one. Right. But, um, but, but it was, it was a, it was a wonderful experience. And so when, when Jeff and I got together and, and, uh, created Cusa Financial. It was just a given that we were going to be involved with the chamber, and so um, they've they've been really helpful with connecting us with uh, the community. And they've uh, actually two days ago we had our uh, business before hours and our ribbon cutting for our office. So that was amazing. I wanted to th- I want to take a minute to thank the chamber and everyone that came out and supported us. It was a a really great event. We got to uh, tell a little bit about what we do and 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 meet some of the members of the community and and build those relationships. So. Yeah, that's what it's all about. You guys have been doing all kinds of ribbon cuttings. <laughs> yeah, we haven't. It's been a lot, but it's, we got to get these businesses to be welcome to the community. So we don't mind um, playing hard, kind of work hard, play hard kind of thing. Um, okay, let's just kind of go around one more time to make sure we any final thoughts, any upcoming events. You, Catherine, you mentioned that you're you're hiring, which is a good oh. thing. Um, but uh, actually, before we get to final thoughts. Your facility, where where are you located? We are located at 408 Shorter Avenue. Okay, is it, do people, is it is it for meetings and counseling or do people stay there? Okay, so we actually have two buildings. We okay. have 408 Shorter Avenue, um, 
which is our hub for Living Proof Recovery. And in that building, what we do is recovery support services, which is we do employment assistance. We can help them get their driver's license, their ID, their social security card, their birth certificate. We have a closed closet because a lot of people, when they do get out of jail or prison or if they're in the streets, they don't have any clothes or they've outgrown their clothes. So what we do is we allow them to go down there and get clothes and things like that. We also have um, a wall in our building that has like shampoo and toothpaste and conditioner and body wash and soap and things like that that they can pick from if they need something like that. All of our meetings are held there. We have those seven nights a week. Our offices are open Monday through Friday, 830 to 5. And all of our certified peer specialists are in there that can do what we call a recovery coaching session. Like, where are you at? Where do you want to be? Do you want to go to treatment? Do you need detox? Do you want to um, set up a recovery plan? Do you need relapse prevention? How can I help you help yourself? Um, So we do all of that during the day. Okay. Uh, You said certified peer instructors? Certified peer specialists. Specialists, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And there's several type of those, actually. Um, And for us, um, because we we are classified by the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities as a addiction recovery support center, So what we need to do is all of the people who work there have to be certified peer specialist of addictive disease. Okay. And so everyone who works there has to have that certification. Um, But myself and um, a couple of my other employees, um, we're also certified peer specialist of mental health and also forensic peer mentors, meaning that we can be a peer specialist and work specifically with reentry and individuals that are coming from jails and prisons. We also have that cert- certification where we can go and work inside a jail and a prison to speak to people before they get out. So. Okay. All right. So uh, let me kind of get back to wrapping up. Final thoughts going around the room. What's your contact information? How can people reach out? They need your services social media, what have you, what do you want people to know? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So for us, you can get on our website at livingproofrecovery.org has our schedule. It has a donate button. If you want to donate to our cause, what we're doing. Um, yeah. How are you funded? We are, well, our salaries and general operating is funded through the Department of Behavioral Health, but a lot of our other funds like that we need to help peers come from our community donations, and it's it's a giant thing. Our home, which is a 9- to 12-month program, I'll make this really quick. We have a next door at Living Proof Recovery. It is our recovery residence for women. We have 12 beds. We are currently have a 3- to 6-month waiting list, but what we do is we work with those women entering into society. In recovery. Okay. So. I, might, I might have gotten you off your train of thought, but no. just con- connection, yeah. social media, website. Yeah. Um, That's ha- all. You just go onto our website. You can message us through our Facebook page as well, which is Living Proof Recovery. Okay. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, John and Elizabeth, same question. Final thoughts. Uh, event coming up. How can people buy tickets? or? Okay. So we have our uh, Facebook page is A Night to Remember um, Rome, Georgia. So a night to remember Rome GA, a uh, night to remember Rome GA.com is our website. If you're wise enough not to use Facebook. Um, <laughs> wow. Our prom. He just took a shot at Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> he can hear it. Don't do that. Um, prom is going to be October 29th this year at the Taylor estate. Uh, you can get tickets through our website. Uh, you can um, also, like I said, look at our web, our, uh, excuse me, our Facebook page. And I want to say that, uh, you know, people, have a perception of prom one way or the other, just understand that prom is a term. It's, it doesn't have to represent what it was for you in high school. It's really just a chance for grownups to get dressed up and all show up in one place uh, and have a good time. And that's what we're looking for. Well, it's funny. You, you meant because the adults are of varying ages, what, what is the music genre? <laughs> so this year with the DJ, um, I, he's pretty good about sort of reading the room and uh, seeing what's out there. Cause he'll, you know, if, if our, I would say, you know, we've got, we, we really do get all ages. I mean, we had people from 18, 19 years old, all, or excuse me, 21 years old, all the way up to, you know, there's probably people that are in their 60s and 70s. I, I know they were there in their 70s. Yeah. And just having a good time. So, yeah, he'll, he'll tailor the music towards what's out there. I was going to say, does it go from like the Beatles to Taylor Swift? Yeah. <laughs> Michael Jackson to Bruno Mars, what have you? <laughs> Yes, it's all over. It's all over the map. It is it's the, the king of rock and roll to Justin Bieber. Yeah, you know what? If, if you show up, you know what? I'll tell you what. If you show up, we'll make sure we have some Elvis out there for you. <laughs> oh, great! Now I got to get a date. <laughs> uh, 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 okay. So any uh, any other any, you know, any other final goodbyes here? 
Did we have we gotten everything mentioned? I think we I think we got everything. Uh, we appreciate you having us on. All right. Um, okay, Jonathan. Well, um, something Catherine said earlier um, has been sticking with me. I've been chewing on it this entire time. You know, when we sat down, we talked about how different our organizations were. But um, one thing I think we all have in common is uh, we're, we're kind of here to help people. Yeah. And we help people in different ways. Um, so it, it was great to hear your story, Catherine, and I appreciate that. Um, it, it reminds me that there's a there, there's a lot going on out there and there's a lot of good people helping with it. So I appreciate that. And yeah. Um, I'll tell you, you know, uh, I got into this industry to, to help people, um, because I, I experienced a, a poor financial journey early on. And, um, I look back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I look back and say, I wish I'd done things differently. So I, I just want to encourage everybody, whether it's with us or with, with another financial professional, go out there and at least get a checkup, make sure you're pointed in the right direction. It's never too early. Um, we don't charge to talk to you. Uh, we talk, we can tell, we can talk to you about how we get paid and we, and we make sure to do that in our first meeting. But more than anything, it, you know, if you want to reach out and talk to us, it's a good opportunity for you to see where you're at and, and where you'd like to be. So it's a really good checkup there. My partner, Jeff, he, he has these, uh, he, he loves asking these knockout questions and he says, uh, he says they're knockout questions cause they knock out the competition. Um, so, uh, that, you know, a knockout question though, the purpose of it is to, um, is to is to get you thinking about you know your personal finances and how they apply to you and and one of the ones I was just thinking about was um, uh, are you ready for retirement and if so how much are you going to need and if if you don't know if you don't know the answers to those questions it'd probably be a good idea to give us a call or anyone else who's willing to teach you what you need to do to be successful so um, you can find us at kusafinancial dot com or you can call us at seven zero six four one three two two one seven We'd like to, we'd love to talk to you and, um, and, and teach you a little bit more about what it takes to be successful with money. That's funny. You, you asked that question. Are you ready for retirement? Most people mentally would say yes. Financially? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, you touched on a couple of times to the show that you'd made some bad financial, you had a bad financial. I, I almost want to know more, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably take a couple of podcasts. Yeah. We, could, we, could start, we could start a series if yeah. you want to. I had, a, I had a bad weekend in Vegas once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Been there. Been there. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Carly, final thoughts from the chamber? Yes. Thanks, everyone. We uh, Y'all are making me blow. I was talking about how much y'all love the chamber. I do appreciate that. Um, but always look at our calendar. Um, I'm glad people are using it. It's definitely a great way to get connected, stay connected in the community, especially with businesses, nonprofits, anything going on like that. Um, our website is realmga.com. And I will always try to help whatever I can. Um, if you ever want to reach out to me as well, um, our phone number is 706-291-7663. So thanks, guys. Yeah, thank y'all for being here. And, and Jonathan, thanks for kind of finding the connection in the room. We, uh, you know, I jokingly call it a cocktail party without the yeah. cocktails because sometimes we bring these groups together of people who have, may not have met, even though it's a small town and you think you know everybody. But you come you come from different places, and yet you found a common thread that every organization and business here is serving the community. Uh, and the chamber creates the connectivity. So, again, thank y'all for taking part. This has been great. You've been listening to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight here on Rome Business Radio. We broadcast from the Hardy Realty Studios on Broad Street in downtown Rome, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. Thank you so much for listening.